Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. Thank you for watching and liking and subscribing. Uh, I got to 100 subscribers the other day, well chuffed. So thank you to all. Uh, yeah, I think I'm getting better at it all the time, but you'll be the better judge of that. Anyway, today I'm going to Old Berry Hill with Jem. I haven't been there for quite a while. Uh, last time I went there, I had an interesting exercise in cooperation with the kids. I took my eldest two, they don't get on, um, and I gave them an oar each and said they need to work together to get across the lake. Anyway, it took 45 minutes to get across the lake. We were going round and round and round and round. It was hilarious. But eventually, one did listen to Tother and uh, we got back eventually. It was funny. Um, but anyway, unfortunately, the boats, we can't get on the boats, which I'm gutted about. They're not available till next week. So I'm thinking I might go on to Milton They've got some really nice tench and corrosions in there. Can be a bit finicky. Or I might just go bagging up on some carp at Bonds. Haven't done that sort of fishing for a long time. Right, made it to uh, Old Berry Hill, that's where we are. <laughs> uh, we've had a walk round and we've decided to fish Bonds Lakes first. There we go. It's a bit windy. Jem's over there, he's after a perch. So it's a bit windy, I'm thinking in the lee of the island over there, might just warm up a bit quicker than everywhere else. There's a few carp in here, but there were some big roach. I seem to remember having a 114 and 15 roach. All those geese are over. Oh look, there's a carp spook, two carp spook, three carp spook. Just now, do you see that out there? Um, so yeah, we're gonna give it a go. Probably go on Milton in a bit. There's some tension there. Blokes had three tench, looks very clear. Might even have a go for some bream. Right, after those two amazing fish, wow. Oh, it was gobsmacked, I was in pieces. Beautiful fish. Really wish that was two pound roach, but still lovely. It's the second 115 roach I've had out of this place. Anyway, after that, I'm, uh, I'm still getting plenty of bites, but loads and loads of perch. So I'm not quite sure what I've got to do to avoid it. It's hard to feed really accurately and then fish around the outside. Um, I was thinking if I fish fed maggots and then fed around the outside, or fed maggots in a really tight spot and then fished a worm around the outside. Because I have been picking up the odd skimmer and stuff. Um, I think there's a big perch in here probably swimming about. But um, I'm gonna try and put a worm on and fish around the outside of my feed. I might come a bit closer in to try and be able to feed a bit more accurately. Uh, on the main lake, got all day, no particular rush to get home, so give it a go. And I don't know whether anyone will see, but that little, oh, that's my welly boot. That little duck is cute as a pie. There they go, a bit camera shy. Right guys, the wind has got up a lot. It's gusting all over the place. I have had uh, probably five or six carp. I haven't shown you a picture. I've got snapped off a couple of times. So I've taken the hook length off and just gone straight through. Uh, what I have been finding, they're really into maggots. Just feeding a few maggots and double maggot on the hook. Um, yeah, it's been all my fish. I think I lost a couple on uh, meat early on, but uh, since then I've been just on maggots. It's getting really hard to see the float actually. I'm gonna have to do something about it. So that tip, that lead over there in the lee. lee in the, there's a nice lee in the wind. Nice lee in the wind. And it's nice and shelled. Get a few bites over there. And still continuing down here. Right, I've had about 10 casts every two minutes. I have seen a few fish swirling around out there. So I've put another two or three yards on the, uh, off the clip. And also I have just filled a small pot lid up with a bit of water, and put some maggots in to make some maggots float. 
uh, and I'm thinking a slow sinking pair of maggots might just bag, bag me another carp. <laughs> what are the chances of that? Just as the duck came across, the bloody bite went off. Oh, just jumped out of the water. Just tail walked about ten yards. And now has got himself in a snag that I haven't seen. Jesus. How did that happen? Right, little tip for those of you who don't already know this. Um you get hooked up in a snag, just let the line go slack. Sometimes the fish just swims out. I can't believe that. That fish tail walked like three or four times over about four or five yards. And now he's hooked me up in a snag. <sighs> All right, we'll give it another tug. That was cool that that bite went around whilst we were looking at the ducks. Waited nearly all day to capture one of those on um, on the camera. No, that is solid. I got in a bit yeah, of a mess a with my microphone, so the sound was awful. I got this carp after making I ten consecutive casts uh, with a maggot feeder, only leaving it out for two minutes, introducing some feed, and then I put some floating maggots on the hook because I'd seen a few fish swirling around, and uh, away we went caught this nice carp this is about the average size of the fish in there they're all about sort of four or five pound the commons and mirrors it's good sport i bet you could get a whole job load on a on a warm day it was a bit tricky because the wind was gusting about and they weren't really having it but anyway i'm going up to milton have a go with jim Right, we've got it in the net. Right, I've moved on to Milton Lake because uh, I don't like carp that much. <laughs> anyway, there's lots of uh, tension corrosions in here. Uh, from past experience, they can be particularly fin finicky, but uh, I do believe Jem has caught a four pound, two ounce one already. Um, a few guys here earlier have caught a few fish. So um, yeah, we're gonna give it a go. Just fishing really fine maggots again and um, we'll see how we get on. Water's quite clear in this one, it's not like the other one where it's really murky but the water is pretty clear so we shall wait and see. So yeah rig wise I've got a Preston's 11 foot feeder, um, a bait runner, I think I've got six pound Maxima through to a five pound fluorocarbon um, Suplex hook link and then I think I've got a size 16 Gamma Power uh, hook. I will just flip this around a bit, see if we can find a fish or two. More baby ducks, where'd they go? There we go. Just got the first fish, don't know what it is. Little funny. Oh, 
Oh. Little pet yo. Nice to catch something different. Quite pleased I actually saw the bite on that. The wind's so bad, I can uh, barely see the float. And I know they were very sensitive biters last time I fished this place. And the water's a lot clearer and colder than last time. So I'm glad I actually saw it. This, is, this feels a little bit better. Oh, it's a skimmer. Oh, Yeah, I think I think there's a, like a reed warbler or something in there. I'll try and uh, get in that. Pretty little skimmer. He's got all his spawning tubercles. I don't know if you can see that. There. And I'm getting a bite on the feeder rod. Oh, it's all go. <laughs> Blimey. Fishing two rods is not not always great. I bought a two rod ticket, but I don't think I need bother. Oh, I think that was a corrosion. I just saw a flash of red fin. Um, gutted. <laughs> Selby. Oh, I'm having a smelly bonfire. It's quite windy out today. So I was just going to explain how I was stopping it uh, and my, the wind is coming from left to right. And um, I plumbed up with a swan shot uh, as a plummet. And I've put the swan shot just above my six inch hook length and plumbed up to that so i know i have got six inches of line on the bottom and then i've put two number eight immediately above the hook length and so those number eight are just dragging the bottom that just slows it down when there's a bad tow just slows it down i'd like to dot the float down a bit more but unfortunately the wind is not allowing such things so yeah, swan shot's great for plumbing up because sometimes you get a silty bottom. If you have a big heavy plummet, it goes right through. I know if you're pole fishing, it might be a bit different, but I'm just drifting through with the toe really. Referring to the uh, using a heavy plummet in that uh, little clip earlier, um, I used to like to use a light plummet because when you use a heavy plummet, it's better on a pole. If you use it on a waggler, it tends to swing over, can make a bit of a mess. Um, and you can't really feel the bottom when you're directly over it as you would on a pole. So you can feel for hard spots. Unfortunately, when you're casting over over pole range with a waggly, you can't do it. So thus I use a small swan shot and it's good to have it just above the hook length. So you know that you've got six inches on the deck. You can obviously adjust it six inches. And then once I've plumbed that, I hook it on the last eye and then count how many eyes up on my rod it is for the depth because swan shots do tend to slip around a bit all right we're into something here feels like a nice fish haven't seen it yet i think it's a tench my first tench of uh, 2021 i love the way they uh their fins when they come to the surface they Wow, oh, check those out. You wouldn't want a lovely. nicer brace of fish oh, in no, your net. <laughs> nice corrosion. What do I know? Proper fish. Oh, it should have come here earlier. Come here, mate. Oh my god, that's a monster. That might go two pound. Shit. That's a big fish. I've got a feeling. I might have a unique brace of uh, a two pound corrosion and maybe a two pound roach. I cannot believe it. <laughs> Check this out.
Very good. Like that very often, will you? Hmm. That's a stunning roach, isn't it? It's a good stunner. Wow. That's an unusual brace as well, isn't it? Hmm. Do you know what? I'm not going to get any photos. I'm just going to. What do you think? Should I? No, I'll pop a few. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these cute little baby Egyptian geese. <laughs> Whilst I was uh, recording those geese, I looked something else. I think it was another reason. These are a stunning strain of Persians in this lake. They really are. Right, Jim today has caught all these tents. It's unbelievable. All on free line prawn and two perch. Get one like that, eh? Look at all them. Real strange thing about those uh, tents that Jem caught. I sat with him for about the last hour, chucked my rod out, free line prawn, uh, never had a bite. Or I had a couple of pulls, and he had four or five whilst I was sitting there, honestly. And then he caught one, and I chucked it right where he was fishing, and then he cast to the other side and caught one. And I was proper poaching, but I couldn't get one. Oh, little tip. Don't use normal prawns. King prawns. They are the key. They last forever, nice and big. Little prawns are useless. King prawns all the way. Just hair rigged on a push stop. Right, we're all done at, um, where are we, Jim? Very old. <laughs> Milton, Milton Lake. It's been I've fantastic. Been yeah, Jim's had, what you had? What do you reckon you had? Nine, ten? Tench, I'd had uh, that roach and occlusion and about seven or eight carp, can't really remember. Anyway, I'll give you a quick scan round. <laughs> so yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. <laughs>